I'm going to start this off with um, a little bit about me, you know, and that, that'll help you decide if I know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, what I did for research on Janus, um, the, the build options I got, um, you know, the order, order process, uh, delivery, um, what I've done as far as, you know, mods to the bike, um, my initial impressions. Um, I'm going to talk about, you know, some, some problems, you know, issues I've had over the first year of ownership. Um, you know, go over what I like uh, about the bike and Janus, and then what I don't like um, primarily about, about the bike. And then, um, you know, things that I, that I wish, you know, Janus would have, you know, might have done differently for the, for the 450 here. And then, you know, just ending it up with, you know, what, what I buy one again. So, so about me, I'm in my 60s and started motorcycling relatively late in life when I was 54. Um, the Halcyon 450 here is the ninth motorcycle I've owned in that, in that time period. Currently shares the garage with a 2017 BMW R9T Scrambler, uh, a 2019 year old gear up, um, two 2019 Moto Guzzi V85 TTs, um, and a 2018 Ducati Multistrada. That's actually, it's a friend's bike. Uh, and I store it for him. Uh, he lives out on the East coast. So he flies out and we ride and stuff out here on the West. Um, I'm five foot eight, 170 ish pounds and with a 30 inch inseam. So pretty much uh, an overweight old man with uh, tiny legs. Um, so, you know, that'll come into play as I talk about, you know, the comfort on, on the bike here. For research, I started looking into like a vintage style bike because I, I really like the styling of the, of the Ural, um, but I would never consider um, getting just the motorcycle of, of a Ural. It's just, it's, you know, just, it's just the build quality is not quite there. They're, they're getting better, but you know, clunky transmission. Um, and really I wanted something that, you know, had a little more reliability than, than, than a Russian build. And um, so I wouldn't consider, you know, the year old uh, motorcycle, but I kind of like that, that vintage, um, you know, 1920s, 1930s um, uh, bike. Uh, so I started, you know, doing some, just some general research and came across Janus um, and they had, you know, the Halcyon 250, the Griffin 250 and the Phoenix 250. Um, and really the, the Halcyon is what, what, you know, drew my eye right, right away. Not that the, the Griffin and the Phoenix are, are bad, you know, looking bikes, design bikes, but really it was the styling on, on the Halcyon that, that really drew me, uh, you know, it was more consistent with, with, you know, the styling that I was, that I was looking for. Um, so I, you know, did some, some research and, um, some chat rooms and, you know, Facebook groups and, uh, some YouTube videos and, um, you know, was listening to the, you know, the good and, and, you know, the complaints that people had and, um, nothing that, that I you know, saw or read, you know, dissuaded me from investigating a little more. I, at the time they, they only had the 250. So I wasn't convinced that I wanted, you know, a, a thumper, a uh, single cylinder, uh, 250, you know, very small displacement that had, you know, that was carbureted. I, I just, I wasn't sure whether I was going to want, um, um, uh, to have something like that, that required, you know, a little more TLC as it were. I don't consider myself to be a, a, a wrencher. You know, when I first got into motorcycling, I, I didn't want to be wrenching on, on bikes. Um, you know, I just kind of figured they'd be like a car where you just get them, ride them, and then you take them in the shop when they need service and stuff. And I've since learned that that's, um, that's a very naive and expensive way to, to own motorcycles, especially lots of motorcycles. So I've learned to, you know, wrench on my own and, and you know, do you know, basic maintenance and some more advanced maintenance. Um, but the whole, you know, carburation I just just never really wanted to get to get into that and kind of have to um, to deal with the, the maintenance on that um, so I didn't really you know pursue it too much further um, and then I heard um, that they were going to come out with a 450 and that's what really you know got me into overdrive in terms of, of really um, making the decision 
um, to, to go with the, with the 450. Uh, did you know, research on what they were looking at, watched all the videos that, that Janice put out, and then saw the, um, the um, uh, Richard riding around, or, or doing the, the 450 prototype ride where he rode around um, Tucson, basically in my backyard, and I got to see you know, what that motorcycle looked like in the areas that I, I normally ride. And that, that sealed the deal for me. I, that was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So put in my order in September of 21. Um, and what I did as far as options is I got the, the LED uh, headlight uh, upgrade. One other option I went with was to get the, um, uh, the shroud there for the for the headlight um, very period look uh, just just love that so um, you know got that as an as another option when I ordered the bike um, I got the extra mirror I've never had a motorcycle that had had a single mirror I thought that was kind of funky so uh, creature of habit I wanted two mirrors so I got the extra mirror uh, obviously I did the leather panniers um, I did the um, brushed exhaust versus the the polished um, again, more for maintenance than upkeep. Uh, I don't like keeping chrome spotless and clean. Um, and you know, the chrome that it has on it is like, okay, I'm all, I'm all right with it, uh, but I'd be okay with those things are painted too. Um, so again, not a real big chrome fan. Um, oh, I did the uh, engraved um, uh, cap as well. Um, I did. Primary pinstriping is copper, and then a secondary pinstripe is black um, with the olive drab paint. Uh, and I really liked the way that turned out. I went with olive drab again for that more that military vintage uh, type of feel to it, and, and really happy with the color. There are a lot of good colors um, <laughs> that that Jan actually you can pick any color you want, uh, and if they if you, they get the paint code, they can paint it for you. Um, but I'm really happy with, with this, this color and the way it turned out. Um, so when I was doing the research, you know, I think one of the bigger complaints that, that folks had out there was the price point. You know, that it's a lot of money for, you know, what you're getting in, in a motorcycle. And, um, you know, to me, I, I, I understand the perspective, but I think, you know, people are, are missing the point there. And I'll echo what others have said that, it's really about it. It's it's a boutique, um, you know, shop with a very you know unique design, um, and it's designed for a specific purpose. So it's not designed to have a lot of, lot of the modern, you know, gizmos and, and doodads, um, you know, that you see on other bikes. And you know, people will say, oh, for that kind of money, you can get you know X, Y, or Z that's got this, this, and this. And it's like, yeah, I don't want that. Um, I mean, the, there are videos out there of, of people expressing opinions around, you know, you, the bike has everything that, that you really need and, and really not much more. Um, and, and the reason why there's not much more is because you really don't need that much more to really have a, a really, you know, great motorcycling ex experience, especially for, you know, the roads and the type of riding that this bike was designed for. Um, so I wasn't, you know, concerned about the price point on the bike, um, but understood the perspective. And the other big thing was people were complaining about, you know, well, it's a Chinese engine. Um, and that was a non-starter for them. And, and look, I understand people's perspective on that. That's, that's their perspective. I don't particularly share that. Um, Janice has a, a really good video on, on the, the uh, SWM motor um, engine that they ha have in here. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to, to that video, but um, you know, from my perspective, it's it's an Italian-designed uh, engine um, that that really has has decades of of, ex, of you know proven reliability, and it's got some tweaks from you know a little stint at Husqvarna, and, and um, it, it's really built to those specifications. Yes, it's built in, in China, but it's not a Chinese-designed engine. Um, I don't look at this as being any different than, you know, an a Apple products, you know, an iPhone. Um, very high quality um, devices that are designed in America, but they're, they're you know, they're, they're built in, in China. So Chinese engine, especially this particular engine, uh, no concerns with that, that at all. Um, 
So that's kind of what I was, you know, what I had seen for the, um, um, you know, for the, the critical concerns about, about Janus. And none of that dis dissuaded me. So for the components for the bike, that they've really sourced some really good components. So they've got a, you know, a sergeant seat. Uh, they've got the Icon rear suspension. They have the Brembo uh, calipers. Um, you know, they've got, um, you know, steel braided uh, brake lines. So this, this isn't, you know, things on, on the cheap or accessories on the cheap, whatever they could find and, and slap it on the bike. I mean, there, there's some quality components in, in, in the bike. Plus you get the fact that it's, it's really, it's, it's kind of a custom, custom build um, and, and not mass produced. And that's another thing that drew me to, to, to Janus. When I've listed all the bikes I had, there, aside from the, the R9T Scrambler, uh, most of the bikes I have are, are fairly unique. Um, when I show up to, you know, events with, you know, other motorcyclists, I, I typically have the only one of that particular kind of motorcycle. So I go to, you know, ADV rides and stuff, and it's all, you know, a sea of, of you know, BMW uh, 1200 GSs. Um, and I'm typically the only Moto Guzzi there. Um, and likewise, you know, having this here, just, it just stands out from, from the crowd. Uh, and that really was another thing that, that appealed to me. Um, so one other thing in, in the, the research, and the, I'll just kind of come under my, my initial impressions here, was, you know, just the, um, the attention that, that, that the bikes gets. And I'll, I'll talk to that a little bit more. Used to that, um, because I have the, the, um, the Ural, um, so for the delivery, I, I have a video of, of the delivery um, of, of this bike. Um, again, I put the order in in September of 21. I think I got the notice that it was, um, the build was complete. And, and Janice does a fantastic job of sending you pics during the build process and stuff. So it really helps to build, build the anticipation. I didn't get those pics until I want to say uh, late April, early May of, of 22. Um, and, and for some people, you know, that, I, that's a long, that's a long wait for me because I had other motorcycles. I really wasn't, you know, waiting for a motorcycle to, to ride. I, I had bikes I could ride. Um, so once it was built, uh, it turned out that I, I missed a delivery, uh, window. I, I think by, you know, less than a week where they had, had uh, just done a, uh, left for to do deliveries in Colorado and the Pacific Northwest or something. Um, and then I don't know if it was like post COVID or, or, or what, but the, uh, they were having a hard time getting a delivery time for me. So it was like two months before I finally got a, a delivery, uh, scheduled for me. And it turned out that, uh, Woody has some family in the area. So he, he went ahead and, and brought this bike and two other bikes out. And then he, you know, he combined that with a, a trip to visit family and stuff. In that delivery video, it's, you know, Woody, and then he, he has his brother-in-law, Don, with them. And um, they looked almost like, like twins, um, but, but trust me, they're, they're not twins. Um, so in that video, you know, uh, Woody delivered, delivered the bike, um, just gobsmacked when I, when I saw it in person. It was just, it looks much better in person than, than any picture that, that you see on Janus website or, or others. It's just, it's really a, a, a fantastic design. So kudos to Janus for really, you know, knocking this one out, out of the park with, with the design. Um, almost a year to get the bike, bike delivered. Um, I know some people, you know, would be put off by that. Part of that was just teething pains, you know, as they're uh, new manufacturing, new production line, getting the kinks worked out of that. I think they were a little overly optimistic on how many bikes they could build in a given period of time. Now they're ramped up, and I see, you know, uh, the 450 numbers from from the re the recent um, um, Janus owners uh, rally, uh, where I'm seeing numbers in like the high 120s. So uh, certainly getting more and more of those bikes out there. And I would assume that the build schedule is, is much less, uh, takes much less time than it did when I first ordered, ordered mine. Um, I did ask about, you know, can I, 
can I pick what the, what the, the, the badge number is on it? And they, they said, well, if you want a specific badge number, you can wait until that becomes available. Uh, and then 55, I was okay with that. And, and that was the next one that was available. So, so I, I picked that. Again, all that was done in, in September of 2021. So uh, got the bike um, and um, proceeded to do some, some mods. Um, one of the first thing I did was to put a, an SAE uh, pigtail on, you know, on, on the battery so I could hook it up to a battery tender. All my bikes are on battery tenders, so if they're not being ridden, then they're on a battery tender. And I have one, that, uh, uh, like a NOCO Genius. Um, I have, those are all the models I use, but they'll handle lithium batteries, no, no problem. So um, they do a good job of, of allowing the, the lithium batteries to you know, slowly discharge like they're supposed to, uh, and then not overcharge them so you run into, into risk of you know, fires or anything like that. So you know, keep it on the charge. That was the first thing I did. Um, I added, um, and I'll, I, I may put a link in, in, the, um, in the description for, for this, the tire pressure sensor monitors. Um, basically, there's a display unit up, up front, and you can see that on some of the, the videos. Uh, and that reads out both pressure and, and temperature for front and rear tires. And then uh, the um, sensors are, are actually, you know, just they go on the, the valve stems and there's a little watch battery in there. Um, and those, the battery life on those is just fantastic. Um, I, my, my Ural, um, I've had them on there now for almost four years and I've not replaced the batteries in those. It, it's a function of how often you, you, you ride. My, my Moto Guzzi, I've, I've uh, had to replace the batteries uh, once in that and I've got 50,000 miles on that. So um, um, those sensors, the batteries last a long time. For the display unit, um, that again, depending on how you ride, uh, a month uh, when you charge it up, um, it's, you know, it's got a little USB port to it that you charge it up. Uh, if you don't ride a lot, then it's maybe two to three months where it has to be uh, charged up. And it charges up really quickly, like 15 minutes and it's got a full 100% charge. Uh, so really pleased with that. Um, You'll notice I, I removed the big honking uh, DOT reflectors. Uh, I'm fortunate that I live in a state where there's not, you know, motorcycle inspections, so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, having everything, um, you know, per the per code or or, or, or whatnot. So um, I removed those uh, just because they did just detracted from from the bike in, in my opinion. I did put some small red reflectors on the license plate in, in the rear, so it's not totally without reflectors. Uh, I don't know if that'll get me out of a repair ticket uh, if I ever get stopped on the bike, but uh, certainly I like to look without the reflectors. Um, something else I do on all my bikes is I replace the, um, all the incandescent bulbs with the LEDs, um, primarily for, for amperage draw, but also um, for increased visibility. So I go with really super bright uh, LEDs, uh, greater light output, uh, and you know, the greater likelihood that you're actually being, being seen on, on the road. So this bike has all LEDs uh, all around. Um, I uh, swapped out the, the stock horn. There's nothing really wrong with the stock horn. It's not bad as far as motorcycle horns go, but I had a uh, a FIAM uh, freeway blaster horn that I took off another bike that I sold. It was just sitting on, on the shelf and I figured, hey, I'll go ahead and put that on there, plug and play. Um, and there's, you know, videos and I'll probably do a little sound clip here of what that sounds like, much, much louder. Uh, again, it really wasn't a primary complaint that I needed to do that right away. It's just something I, I decided to do because I had it. Um, I added the clear water um, auxiliary, um, lights uh, for the front. Uh, I have those on a lot of my bikes, on the Moto Guzzi, on the Ural, uh, even on, on the R9T. Um, and I really do, again, for increased visibility uh, for oncoming traffic, uh, helps with light throw um, in, in low light conditions. I, I do a lot of riding um, up Mount Lemmon, um, and I usually leave here in the early morning because there's, there's less traffic. And in the winter time, you're, it's dark out. Um, so having that, that additional light really helps. 
What I found with how I have the LED headlight um, aimed here is that it's great. It has a great throw on, on the high beams and the low beams. It's it, it's okay. Um, and then th what I was finding is that when I hit the high beams, um, the area in front of the bike uh, really wasn't all that illuminated, and that wasn't all that uh, confident and confidence inspiring when you're trying to look for, you know stuff that might be in the road or you know animals that might be on the sides of the roads there so having these these auxiliary lights actually now gives me throw from you know right in front of the bike all the way out to to where the high beam it's really helped out a lot um, i actually bought those lights um, again wanted to go with the smallest light possible because i i didn't want to mess with the aesthetics of of the bike uh, i didn't want big honking um, you know, lights on, on there. And these actually are smaller diameter than, than the, turn, the turn signals there. Um, I knew I was gonna put them on there, so when I, I, I think I bought these like maybe a month after I ordered the bike, so maybe October of 21. And then once the bike came, I played around with, you know, positioning and stuff. And uh, for a while there, I was thinking I was gonna put on the, um, the engine guards um, once those engine guards uh, became available. And and the more I thought about it, I just, it just, I like the, you know, how narrow the bike, the bike looks. Um, so I decided to get against that uh, and I instead made my own brackets and mounted it up to where the, um, uh, the shocks mount to the, the front fork there. You I know, mean, got a little longer boat um, uh, to make that work just fine. And in my opinion, I don't think that where I've got a mount it really detracts from the overall aesthetic of, of the bike. So really happy with the way those, those turned out. For, for the, um, uh, the clear water lights here, in the daylight running mode, uh, they operate at about 30% 30, 30 intensity. So oncoming traffic can see you because you got your headlight and you have some extra lights up, up front. Um, and then when you, you know, hit your high beams, then they go on to 100% intensity. Uh, so, Having, having that uh, really helps out a, a lot. I will say it was um, not easy to find the various wires. At first I thought I was gonna be able to go through the, the loom coming off of the, um, the handlebar there and, and be able to you know, uh, hook into the high beam and the, and the, the, the uh, ground and power switch for the lights there. Uh, I, I mean, I, try, I, I probably wasted two hours just trying to mess around, look, look for that. Oh. Um, saw. Uh, somebody had posted on Facebook group the um, uh, the Motocult uh, rear tail light. That's a fantastic design. Um, um, I got that one right as soon as I saw it. Uh, really fits with the vintage of the of the bike. Really like that a lot. Um, I got the LED version, and when I got it, what I didn't really care for is it comes. It has two bulbs in it. One that illuminates the license plate, and then one that's your brake light. And both bulb bulbs are are LED. Uh, but they're a cool white LED, and because of the the there's stop the word stop that's kind of molded into the glass on the lens for the for the brake assembly brake light, and um, because of that molding process, the letters are a little thinner. So when you when you have a white light in there and you hit the brakes, you basically get like this, you know, whitish yellowish color, um, and it doesn't look red anymore. So I, I swapped out a very, with, a, with a really bright uh, red LED just for the, for the brake light portion of that. And that red LED you know, fixed my, um, my, my issue with having you know, that, that off color when you, when you hit the brake light. Um, in addition to that, um, because it's a, it's a smaller, smaller light, I added some Skeen P4 uh, auxiliary brake lights and those are programmable lights that you can adjust the intensity. They're bright as heck. Uh, you can adjust, adjust the intensity. You can uh, adjust whether they, they, they pulse or they, they flash when, when the brake gets hit. You can set you know, how many series of flashes and stuff. I just have mine for you know, steady on or, or off. I don't have it doing anything uh, more than that. Um, I've got those on, on every other bike that I have except for the, um, uh, the, the R9T Scrambler and eventually I'm going to put them on that as well. Um, I'll put a link to those as well. Um, uh, very, very easy plug and play. 
you know, getting everything to fit inside the, the, the small housing for the motocult bulb was, you know, a little bit of a challenge, but uh, pretty straightforward. Um, so finally went into the, to, you know, moved the headlight, went into the back, uh, and then it was really straightforward which wires go where. Um, I will say that putting that, that light assembly back on was a royal pain in the butt. Um, not looking forward to doing, doing that ever again. Um, things are, are pretty tight and crammed in, in there. And just getting everything with uh, the hood and everything to, um, uh, to line up, is, um, it, was, it was a challenge. Oh, another mod that I did that I forgot to mention was I put on paint protection film um, on the top of the tank and then on, on the rear fender as well. Um, I don't know what it is about the, the paint that Janice uses, and, and I don't know if they put a clear coat on it or whatever, but it dulls uh, when you get gasoline on it very quickly. I don't care how fast you are at cleaning it up. And... Um, Others have said, oh, you just have to be more careful, you know, when you're, when you're fueling up. And, look, stuff happens, um, and you get little spatters when you're doing the, the fill-up and stuff. And so I put that paint protection film on there. Um, well, the first time I did it myself, and I found out that I suck at, at putting paint protection film on. So I went and had it done professionally. And you can't tell it's there at, at all unless you're really close to the bike. I had to line up the lines for you know, where Kelly had done the pinstriping on there, so it, it, it just fits with the bike. And now I don't have concerns when I'm, when I'm, I'm filling up. Um, so just be aware that, um, you know, the either, you know, do some ceramic coating or, you know, heavy wax or whatever on, on the bike so that if you do get a fuel spill, it's not gonna dull the, the finish on, on, on the paint there. So the, the initial imp impressions, um, you know, in that delivery video, you, you know, I, I, I make note of the fact that this is the first time that I, that I, that was the first time that I, I rode the Halcyon. Um, and I will say that from that, from the, you know, just pulling out of the driveway here, uh, it was just fantastic. I had a big smile on my face. Um, it, it, it really feels like riding a bicycle. It was like riding a, a beach cruiser bicycle. Um, just really, really easy um, and, and very light and maneuverable. I have a little over 3,900 miles on, on the bike right now. Uh, I did 3,400 in the first, you know, first year, but uh, here September of 2023 doing this, this video, it's got 3,900 miles on there. Um, still impressed with how light and maneuverable the bike, the bike is. Um, for me, again, you know, my frame, my weight, um, it, it suits me to a T. It, it's, it's a perfect fit for, for, for me and, 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 and my body type. You know, um, taller riders might, you know, have more, more bend in their knees, might feel a little more cramped. Uh, I would look to videos of Richard riding on, on this bike to get a good idea. He, he's a big dude from what I understand. So you can take a look at, you know, if you're, if you're a larger uh, individual, you know, what that would actually kind of look like. But for me, the, the seating position is upright. The, the seat's very comfortable. The reach to the handlebars for me is, is perfect. I don't have any you know, issues with numbness or, or tingling. I, I know that some people have, have talked about that. Uh, and again, I think it's really more along you know, each individual person and how, how the, the bike fits there. But you, know, you can adjust the, the tilt of the handlebars and there are a lot of options for you know, trying to work around that. Um, I don't know if they, you know, you could probably put some bar risers on there if you needed to have, you know, it, it back a little uh, closer to you. But for me, the, the ergonomics of the bike are, the, are absolutely perfect. Um, wouldn't change anything at all on, on that. I, I did see other people, you know, in doing the research where they talked about, oh, I put a windscreen on there. And I know people do have windscreens on there, but, but for me, I'm, I, I have the R9T naked bike. Um, and I, I've got no problem with that. And, and this does a really good job of, of, of cutting through, through the wind. Um, I've, I've had it uh, as uh, up to 90 miles an hour um, on, on the interstate um, and didn't feel like I was being blown off the bike. Um, now, was it, 
would I do that for long periods of time? No, but I wanted to see what the, what the bike was able to do. Uh, and it really wasn't um, all that that bad from you know the wind on your, on your chest and stuff. So I don't know if it's how they have this thing set, set up here that it helps to you know cut through some of the wind. Again, being 5'8", a little shorter, so you know, maybe I'm not catching as much wind as, as taller uh, riders would. Um, but that wasn't an issue. So it, it, you know, it's, it's a single cylinder. It is a little bit vibey. Um, not so much through the foot pegs. Um, you know, it's, it's really the handlebars, um, you know, the mirrors, especially at, at higher, you know, highway speeds, like, you know, 75, it actually maybe make that down to like 65 up. Um, you know, the, the, there'll be vibration in the mirror. You can feel it in, in the handlebars and stuff there. And I don't know if bar and weights might you know be able to, to mitigate some of that but um uh it, it is it is you know a little vibey um bike um i will say that my moto guzzi at at higher speeds um is is probably you know just as vibey um um but all in all not not too bad but um you know if you're thinking about this you should be aware that you know it is a single cylinder and um, it, it does get a little little vibey at, at high R, RPMs. So, you know, my, my overall, you know, initial impressions on it was just, you know, fantastic uh, bike. Um, you know, I, I'm able to, um, at, at a full stop, I can flat foot the bike, um, no problem. Um, and that really helps a lot. There, there aren't a lot of the bikes that I own that I can flat foot uh, at, at a stop. So really like that that feel of being able to do that uh, on, a, on a motorcycle here um, the the overall you know performance of the bike in terms of how does it handle in curves you know i do a lot of rides up to mount lemon and stuff and you know twisty mountain curves and stuff and it is remarkably planted uh for going into curves and it's it's fairly you know it's easily flickable side to side in part because of the weight uh, I've had other bikes um, that, you know, I've taken up there, you know, my early bike days were with cruisers and just trying to get those things to turn in, in corners is just, um, it wasn't a lot of fun. Um, this bike is fantastic in, in the twisties and the corners and stuff and really does a good job of, of responding to, to inputs. The tires that they have here, these Dural tires, you know, seem to be fine. Um, I've got 3,900 miles on the bike and the tires look, look fantastic. So it looks like they'll easily do, you know, knock on wood, I don't want to jinx myself here, but looks like they'll, they'll do, um, you know, 12,000 plus uh, on a set of tires here. Um, so, you know, no, no complaints there. The other piece in terms of comfort on the bike is, you know, with the, with the smallish fuel tank, you're having to stop with fuel every, you know, 100 miles or so. So you're not sitting on the bike all that long for your butt to get sore or anything, anything like that. Um, and, and again, I've never had, even when I've done, um, you know, I did a 350-mile day and then I, I did a trip down to Mexico, a uh, multi-day trip down, down to Mexico and never was uncomfortable after you know a day's worth of riding and stuff on this so um you know no no problems there with the suspension the, the seat um it, it's it just all works well well for me in, in in my experience i did mention you know the the sourcing the components uh the brakes um i've seen you know a few people talk about well it's only got a single rotor up front and i'm telling you it's got plenty of stopping power. Um, it does take a while to get used to the, the leading um, um, fork, leading link, I forget what that calls, you know, suspension up front is. It just doesn't dive when you hit the brakes, you know, in a more traditional um, sus suspension um, setup for, for the front, um, but stops perfectly fine. Um, you know, rear brakes are, are, are good as well. Um, so no, no complaints, no issues with, with, with the brakes. Clutch works fine. You know, I would say that, you know, shifting is not the fastest in, in, in the world uh, with the bike, but very confident, you know, going into gears and stuff. Only been a few times where I've been lazy 
and coming out of first, you know, hit it in second. But downshifting, never have had a false neutral in, into um, uh, when, when downshifting and stuff. It's um, um, from that standpoint, that's been been rock solid for me. So as far as you know, first year problems. Um, you know, for me, I've, I've had the flaky tachometer, and you guys, you know, those of you that have watched some of my videos have seen the tachometer, and I'll put up a little video of what that actually looks like. Um, I've, I've replaced it. Uh, you know, Janice, very responsive in sending me out a replacement, uh, put a new unit on there, and it, it does the exact same thing. And they're actually waiting on me to, to give them some information to, to come up with a, with a replacement for the second flaky unit that I have. When Woody did the delivery, um, he mentioned that there's this little port, vacuum port, um, between the air box and, and the engine intake there, and um, that, that there's a plug that goes on there. He says that plug had a tendency to pop off. And he told me, look, if it pops off, not a big deal. Just, you know, um, put your finger over the port to start the bike, and then once you have the bike started, it doesn't need to be covered again. And sure enough, I was on a ride like maybe three weeks later and uh, it, it popped off, was able to, to find it because when it popped off, it hit my, my glove and I saw a little black thing. I was, I was stopped um, in, in a parking pullout. So I was able to find it, put it back on, started the bike up and it popped off again. It went shooting out really far. Um, made it, managed to find it the second time um, and, you know, just, didn't put it back on. I, I just started it with without the plug, um, and then rode the bike home. And then when I got home, I looked, and there, sure enough, the plug had split. So I MacGyvered my own solution. I just went ahead and took some electrical um, shrink tube, folded that over on itself, and then just tied that off with with a zip tie, and that's worked just fine. Uh, Janice did send me a replacement, a little cap for the for that port. I keep it in the pannier so in case my MacGyver solution fails, uh, I've, I've got something that uh, you know keeps me from having to put my finger down over that port to start the bike. Let's see, so I've had also had a slight oil leak from where the, um, uh, the shift lever goes into the, into the, the transmission. Um, and it, it wasn't a, a huge oil leak, and Janice sent me out an, a new seal. I haven't put that in there yet because I would say over the course of a couple of months, well, definitely less than a dozen drops of oil over, you know, two, two, two to three months. And ever since then, once I got the new uh, seal, it's not leaking anymore. So one of two things has happened. Either the, the, the seal has, has swollen up enough to make a, t a tighter seal or the, um, uh, the bike is out of oil. Um, and I'm not sure the latter is, is really the case. Um, the, Left foot peg rubber uh, has jettisoned from the bike. I noticed that when I was on my trip in Mexico and it was sliding off, so I would just, you know, kick it back off my boot. Did that several times. Remember making it back home with it still on there and then subsequently forgot about doing anything about it and was on a ride with a buddy and um, he said he noticed something black. Um, um, come off the bike and you know I didn't think anything of it and we figured oh maybe I just ran over something and it wasn't until you know a few days later that I noticed like oh okay I'm, I'm missing my my rubber there so one thing that I uh, haven't been able to find is just the rubber sleeve that fits over the built well uh, foot pegs um, so I'm going to talk to Janice to see if I can't get that under a warranty repair the one on the right is nice and solid I don't I don't know why the one on the left um, decided to um, to leave to leave the bike for being a a, a, a new bike uh, new build and everything very few issues that, that I've had with with the bike um, the EarthX battery no problems with that I know other people have had problems with their EarthX batteries um, I haven't had any any problem with that um, you know I'll, I'll check the, the bolts and stuff occasionally especially as uh, folks on Facebook or, or the, the forum will point out like, hey, check these bolts or whatever. Uh, really haven't had a problem with loose bolts. Up until today, I was, was uh, an issue I was having with the bike was the side stand, uh, where it was very easy to, for the bike to roll off the, the side stand. Um, 
and you know I sent an email in to, to Grant um, and said, hey, just heads up, I'm doing this video and I'm going to mention the, the side stain here because it's, it's an issue and just want you guys to, to, to be aware of this. And um, next thing I had, you know, an email from him saying, yeah, we'll look into it. I want to, you know, I'll forward it on your email. And I did a video of, of how easy it was for the, the side stand to, to, the bike to move on the side stand. Um, Richard got back to me right away and he said, hey, a couple things you could do because they're looking at, you know, potential different designs where other people have had, you know, issues around. They think it stands up too tall. I, I'm okay with the, with how it stands up, but they're, but Janice is looking into options for maybe increasing the lean angle a little bit for those that ha have complained about that. Um, but one of the suggestions he, he had was to go ahead and just tighten the, the nut. And I did that. So Richard, thank you very much. That actually, um, um, you know, solved my issue. And I, I, I told him that I didn't notice that when I first got the bike. And I think it's just, um, it's something that's kind of just worked itself loose uh, over, over time. So just tighten it up a little bit. And now I've got no concerns about the bike staying on, on the center stand. So uh, thanks Richard for, for that suggestion. So what I realized when I was, you know, doing the edit of the video here that I seem to have skipped over a section on what I like um, about the bike and uh, Janice. So, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of list those things out here right now. So first and foremost, I absolutely, you know, like the styling on on the Halcyon 450. Just, just a phenomenal. Um, style and, de and design of the bike and you know you've heard me talk about that throughout the the video here um you know the second thing i like is it, it for me it's a very comfortable bike um and i wasn't expecting it to be as comfortable but um it really does perform well it's it's you know easy to ride it's a very comfortable ride um you know it does well in in the corners it's planted it's got great brakes um, you know, all, all that stuff that you heard me mention here, that, that goes, goes all into the what I like category. Um, you know, a, a big thing is I, I like, you know, Janus Motorcycles, the, the company and their, their level of customer service. Um, you know, I, I, I don't consider myself to be a squeaky wheel. Uh, and certainly I haven't been, you know, overly anxious about getting, you know, the minor, you know, issues. Um, fixed right away, but you know they've been very responsive, and I, and I know they're they're you know they've been really busy, um, which I'm glad to see that they're you know they're they're getting a lot of you know, uptick and success in, in their in their bikes, and it's good to see them busy. But no matter how busy they are, they've been very responsive, and like I've said before, they wait on me to get back to them versus you know me waiting on on them for for stuff. So. Um, that's up there pretty high on what, you know what I like about you know the motorcycle and it's really the company behind behind the motorcycle. Um, you know, it's there. There are so many things I like, and you've heard me touch on them, you know, throughout the video. So hopefully, you know, you, your your takeaway from this is that there's more things I like about the bike than than you know the minor things that I've mentioned that I don't like about the bike. Um, So I'm just going to leave it at that. Things that I, that I don't like about the bike, um, you know, probably at the top of the list is, and I don't think it's an engine issue. I, I think it's more of how they've got things mapped. Uh, but when the bike is cold, uh, and this is why I don't think it's an engine issue because it don't really only is, is noticeable when the bike is cold. But when the when the engine's cold, and you go to accelerate from a stop, um, you get nice smooth acceleration up to about 4,400 RPMs or so. Uh, those are guesstimate RPMs because of you know the aforementioned uh, issues I had with the tack. But uh, there's a little hesitation, and then it'll pick up af after that. Um, and in second gear, it'll do this. You can notice it in second gear as well. Once the engine is warm, um, you don't notice that it's, it's still there a little bit in first, but not not as much. And you can't you don't notice it all in, in second gear. So 
Um, that combined with uh, another um, 450 owner who had some issues with his bike, took it back into Janus and they did some work on it. He said they remapped um, the bike for him. And he said it, that hesitate, because he was having the same issue with the hesitation. So that hesitation in that 4,000, 4,400 RPM is gone. Even when the bike is cold, because you don't, don't notice this. It's like having a brand new bike. So um, I think it's more of a mapping issue, not, not an engine issue. And I'm hoping that you know, Motocult or somebody else comes, in, comes up with a remap and I'll get that done on, on the bike right away and then uh, I'll have no issues with, with that there. None of the issues I've had with the bike have prevented me from actual riding the motorcycle. Um, so these are all just minor, you know, annoyances more than anything else, but I've been able to get out, ride the bike, no problem. Um, I know that Janus will take care of the tack, no concerns about that. We'll see what we can do about the, you know, resolving that, that you know, engine hesitation when it's when it's cold, and you know the, the the foot peg thing. But everything else, you know, Janus has been fantastic um, in addressing whatever issues or concerns. If anything, they've been waiting on me more than I I've waited on on them. Um, you know, today was a good example of Richard and Grant getting back to me, sent an email, and I'm like, God, I, I think it was like 20 minutes. I had an, an email back from them on that. Um, so. Um, you know, no, no complaints there. Uh, otherwise, you know, not really, you know, too much else that I, that I, um, you know, don't like, uh, about, about the bike. So what I, what I wish Janice would have done differently, um, you know, when they first had the bike available, it would have been great to have the accessories for the bike. So the rear rack. Um, the service stand or, or center stand. A service stand would help a lot. Um, the bike is, it's pretty low. So changing the oil, um, you know, if you don't have, you know, a, a, a service stand or a lift, um, changing the oil is, is not as easy as it, as it could be because you're, you're down low and you're trying to, you know, um, on your belly, on your back, you know, getting to things and stuff. So I've since purchased a, um, a lift. Uh, makes oil changes a lot, lot easier. Um, but it'd be nice to have, have that option because another thing I like about, you know, what, how Jan what Janus is doing is they have it set up so that you can um, service the bike yourself under warranty. And I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, it would just, you know, have been nice if they would have had some some serviceability items available, you know, for for the, the early, um, you know, builds of, of the bike here. Um, you know, one of the other mods that I did, I didn't talk about it when I was going through mods, was the um, um, the, the luggage rack on, on the rear. Um, I waited for, for Janice to come out with theirs and I had that, that trip to Mexico that I was, pl I was planning on taking and I was hoping that Janice would come out with you know, the, just the, the book rack or luggage rack from the 250. Uh, and that didn't happen in time. So um, I weld a, as a hobby and um, I went ahead and, and welded up my own rack and really happy with the way that turned out. I, I did two versions, um, one with the, um, uh, with support so I could put on uh, fuel uh, containers, extra fuel containers, which I needed in, in Mexico. And then this one here, and I knew I was going to do this at the time because when the bike was being delivered, uh, Janice told me they, they hadn't um, uh, come up with a design for, for the, um, that, that luggage rack in, in the rear. So what I did is I ordered an extra set of supports. So when, when Woody delivered the bike, I had an extra set of supports for the panniers and then I welded that directly onto those supports. So I can take that off, put the other unit on, which um, different design, it doesn't use those pannier supports, or I could go back with the original pannier supports and just have it be to totally stock. So, you know, getting back to what I wish, you know, Janice had done differently is, you know, having like the rear rack and stuff available. When I, when I did see the design for their rear cargo rack or whatever they're calling it, um, I, I mean, 
that was just that was that initial design was just a fugly design. So apologies to whoever designed that at, at Janus, but um, not not a good design in my opinion in terms of how it draws away from the the lines of the bike. I will say that personal preference. I don't like the design they're they're selling right now because it's the same thing. It looks far too modern, futuri futuristic. It doesn't really fit the overall design aesthetic for the bike, in my opinion. Apologies to, to you know folks who've got that, who like it, great, good for you. But for me, it doesn't fit with the design of the bike at all. So I, it'd be nice if they just offered this. Now, Motocult does have the, the uh, rear rack that looks just like the 250. It's a little shorter than what I have right there. Um, and that's, to me, is much more fitting. I thought the design on the Halcyon, or the, the 250 was great. Uh, I think this is a case of, of, you know, Janus trying to design something for a problem that really didn't exist. I know some people wanted to have, you know, a, um, basically um, a, a sprung suspension uh, for, you know, what the luggage, the carrier for, for a pillion and stuff. And, um, you know, from my perspective, 250 extra seat with with springs um, it wouldn't be the most comfortable ride for a pillion but uh, again it would fit more with the design aesthetic so enough harping about that um, the other thing that I that I that I don't like about you know the bike here is for these early um, for the early builds and I don't know if this is the Amish welders or whatever but because I weld as a hobby the MIG splatter on here is, it really would have been nice if they would have just knocked off some of the splatter instead of just painting over it. Some of the welds are, are pretty gnarly looking welds. Um, so again, because I weld for a hobby, I notice stuff like that, but I'm not a real big fan of the overall, you know, weld quality, this on the, on the initial production. I do know that Janus is bringing more of that in-house, so, you know, maybe that's that's improved a bit, but not not a big fan of, of, of the the weld quality they they look like they're they're good penetrating welds and stuff and and structurally sound they're just not real pretty looking welds again the the center stand service stand would be helpful in terms of doing the oil um, one thing you note because it's low clearance uh, if you're in in parking lots that have you know speed humps and stuff if they're really big speed humps you got to be careful because the bottom of the bike is gonna is gonna hit those speed humps in Mexico. Um, a lot of the towns have speed humps, you know, as you enter or, or, or exit the town. And there were a few towns, I think it happened three times, where I actually hit the bottom of, of the bike going over the speed humps. I've looked underneath there, not quite sure what I hit, whether it was the exhaust or, or what, but I couldn't see any, any marks there. But just be aware, it's pretty, pretty low clearance. Um, also, um, you know, if you're doing, um, you know, some some leans in, in the bike, um, not dragging a knee, but if you're, if you're doing leans in the bike, you're, you're gonna drag the, the foot pegs. Um, just expect that. Um, I have ground off the, the rubber on the, the left side. I did grind off the rubber on the, on, or excuse me, on, on the right side here. I did grind off the rubber on the, the left side before you know, it completely jettisons. And then riding on, on Saturday, I wound up hitting the, um, the, the foot peg on the, on the left again going in, into a turn. So just got to be aware. I mean, they are, um, you know, they're collapsible. So, so you're not at risk of losing stability on the bike or anything like that. But be aware when you do some, some leans um, in, into curves um, that you're going you're gonna to go ahead and drag the pegs. Um, so it's always good to have the technique where you're, you know, adjusting your foot so you're not, you know, dragging your, your, your boots and stuff on that. Something else I wish they would have done differently was, um, and I get it, it's, it's a dry sump design, uh, totally get that, um, but it'd be nice to have either an oil sight glass, if that's possible of doing that in, in a dry sump design or not, but checking the oil on this is not as convenient as my other bikes. Um, and you have to remember that, you know, the bike's gotta be up to operating temperature um, then you got to let it sit for a little bit and then, then you measure, you know, with the dipstick, you, you measure the oil level. Um, and that takes a while to get used to of doing that after ride versus, you know, doing your, your T-clocks expansion in the morning before or before a ride and checking your oil. 
Um, and I will say that I've, I have been bad at remembering that. You know, come back from a ride and it's like, oh, I got to remember to check the oil and wind up putting the bike away and, and forget to check the oil. So um, kind of wish that was a slightly different process for being able to, to, to check the oil there. Um, I know there, others have had issues with, you know, leakage from the, from the banjo fittings uh, on the oil lines. Not had a problem with that. Been, been very solid. Uh, again, very little issues with, with, with this bike here. I was also hoping that with a larger displacement engine, they would come up with a, with a larger uh, fuel tank. Uh, but it's the same um, fuel tank as on, on the 250, so a two gallon tank. I understand, you know, going with a four gallon tank, um, that would be a pretty big tank to put on there and I think would kind of really mess with the, the design aesthetics here. But I think a three gallon um, is something that they could have done and, you know, not have it be either too much wider or, or taller than, than this existing tank here and give you, you know, a little more range before you have to stop and fill up. Again, that's just, that's just me. It'll be nice to have, have a larger tank. Uh, when I do longer rides, um, I put on the other rack that's got the, you know, the, the mounts for the rotopacks and I'll, I'll have pictures of that here so you can see what those look like. I can carry three and a half gallon, extra gallons of fuel. Um, and then it's just a matter of pulling over and, and filling up on the side of the road, which I, I, I'll, you should be seeing video of that as, a, as an example here. Um, speaking of larger, I wish they would have come up with some, some slightly larger panniers. Um, they're great for carrying, you know, small stuff, um, but it'd be nice to be able to fit a little more um, in, in, in the, the, the panniers um, so that you can go to a grocery store and, you know, it'd be great to put like, you know, half gallon of milk or something in, in there. Um, so, you know, some bigger panniers, that, that would have been fad, fantastic to have some, some larger panniers. So maybe that's something that they can work with their suppliers and, um, and have that as, as an option going forward. That'd be something I, that'd be something I would consider. And the other, from, from a wish list standpoint, and I don't expect Janice to do this, but um, it'd be great to have um, tubeless um, wheels. Um, I'm not a real big fan of, of tube tires for, for basically road bikes. Uh, there really is no need to have a tube tire on, on a road bike. I understand for, for off-road, you know, having a tube tire makes, makes a lot more sense, but um, I just don't like the vulnerability that, that tubes give you when, you, when you're on, on the bike. Um, you have to worry about things about, you know, wear at the valve stem, um, you know, thorns. Um, something as goofy as a thorn uh, could give you, give you a flat and then trying to fix that flat on the side of the road can be um, not a pleasant experience. So I carry a, 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 a can of slime with me. So if I do get, you know, a small puncture, hopefully that, that slime will work enough to where, to home or to, to a service station and, and get the, the tire repaired. I am going to look into converting these over to uh, tubeless. There are conversion kits that you can do where you, you, know, you seal up the spokes on the inside. Um, I've known folks have done that on, on, on other motorcycles and hold air just, just fine. So I, I may go ahead and do that. Again, not a fan of the, um, of the tube tires. So, you know, because I carry the, the, the can of slime and then I've got a little, you know, battery operated air compressor, that takes the capacity in, in the panniers. So going back to having larger panniers, that, that'd be something that I wish uh, Janice would, would have done uh, differently. The last thing I want to say, and I wish they carried this over from the 250 design was a kickstart. For such a component that really is you know, period for this bike. Um, I really wish that this thing had a kickstart because that's, I've got one on my, on my Ural and um, it's kind of cool to be able to go ahead and, you know, kickstart a bike um, and, and really have it, you know, have it be part of that, that whole vintage experience and vintage feel of, of the bike here. So um, really wish Janice would have, would have done that. Again, not really complain, a complaint about Janice, but because they they do allow uh, and they do have you know service videos and stuff out there it i would like to see them do a better job of having tools and service items uh more readily available on on the website shop you know the videos will say oh yeah 
uh, you can get these this doodad from us. Well, I tried looking for that doodad and couldn't find it anywhere on, on their website. So I uh, would like to see them do a better job of keeping service items you know, for the bikes available so that, that those of us that do our own service have the, the necessary tools uh, to get the job get the job done. Um, so again, it's not really a slam against Janus, but I think there's, you know, um, getting more, more merch and then making sure that their, their, their web shop has the appropriate service items so that, you know, folks can, can service their bikes. I think that would be uh, good for Janus to do. So kind of closing this out here and, um, you know, do I think this is a, um, you know, this Halcyon 450 is, is a perfect bike? Uh, no, I, I don't believe that there is such a thing as a, as a perfect motorcycle. And, and that's one of the reasons why, and I keep telling my wife this, that's one of the reasons why I have um, different motorcycles. You know, each motorcycle does uh, a certain aspect, you know, very well. This is, this Halcyon 450 is not a bike for, you know, cruising co cross country. Can you do it? Yeah, you, you can. I mean, uh, Richard's done it in, in, a, in a 250, um, but it's really not design, designed for that. Um, so it's, it's, not, it's not a perfect bike, but for me, in my experience, it checks a lot of the boxes. Um, and it, it fits me perfectly, um, but I still have other bikes that I ride, like if I'm gonna go ahead and ride you know, dirt roads and stuff, then I take the Moto Guzzi. I could do it on this, but I'm not going to. You know, again, low clearance um, suspension is not really set up for uh, for stuff. And I think the video that Janice did of Charlie and the the Rockies is a good example of of yeah, you could do it, but um, um, I don't know. I guess you'd have to ask Ch Charlie if he really had had fun, um, you know, in, in, with with that experience. Um, so for me, this, is, this has been a, a great bike. Um, would I buy it um, again if I, if I had the opportunity? Um, and that's um, um, an unequivocal yes, uh, in a heartbeat. Uh, it really is um, everything that, I, that, I, that I'd hoped for. You know, design is just fantastic. Um, oh, I guess I forgot to, uh, in, in uh, researching this, speaking of the design and that's the um, what I'm calling the Janus delay factor um, this thing attracts a lot of attention when I was you know getting into the Ural um, you know people were telling me oh you got to be prepared for the Ural delay factor and I'll, I'll tell you all right here Ural has got nothing on um, the attention that that this bike gets um, it's it's almost comical when you when you pull into you know a parking lot or gas station stuff and just have people's heads whip, you know, left and right as they're trying to you know get with the bike and invariably you'll have people come up and want to you know ask questions about you know what is what is that so I put a little sticker out to my YouTube channel and you know if I want to get in and out quickly I'll I'll you know be polite and have them take a picture of that and you know they can get more information there but. Uh, you can expect that uh, you're going to get a lot of attention on, on the bike. Um, and that's, that's not a bad thing. That, that's good. Um, you know, it, it shows that it really is a unique bike, and that's another reason why I, I chose, you know, the Janus Halcyon 450 because of the unique styling of the bike. So leave me a comment if there's uh, something that you wanted me to cover in this review that I, that I didn't, or uh, more importantly, if there's something that I said in the video that wasn't accurate, um, uh, let me know and I'll do my best to address it or, or um, you know, something you'd like me to see covered and I'll, I'll try to do a video on that as well. But um, if you could do me a favor and, you know, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed and, and that all helps with, you know, the YouTube slash Google algorithm for um, making the channel and the content more visible to 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 more people um i mean i've been i've had been doing this on youtube for i don't know eight or nine years now and i'm not out i don't make money it's not my intent it my whole reason for a youtube channel twofold one is 
I like looking at my, my videos because it, it helps to bring back memories of, of you know, being on, on rides. And um, I'm pretty sure that um, the person that's watched the most videos on my channel has, has, has been me, but I, I like doing it. It's like going through a photo album, but it's, it's the videos. Um, the other pieces, you know, I'm focused on more of, of the scenery from, from, you know, behind the handlebars. Uh, I don't do a lot of blabbing. Uh, I'd rather just let people think for themselves and enjoy the, the scenery and, you know, trying to work on an audio setup that allows for better sound coming from the various bikes. Um, um, I'm not going to get into my, my GoPro ramp, but their audio sucks. Having, you know, people hit the like button and subscribe button really helps with that Google al algorithm to, to put it as a recommended, you know, video or channel and, and um, you know, give others the opportunity to, you know, see the Janus um, and, and see the, the, so the scenic rides. So I'm going to go ahead and end there. If you made it all the way to the end here, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate you watching the video. And um, again, leave me a comment um, if there's something you'd like to see me cover that I didn't cover on this. So again, thank you very much.